Hey guys! Um, I thought I would do a video today with my new camera, which I haven't used by myself yet. I've only used it when I filmed the video with me and Jenny. So sorry if it's a bit weird looking. I'm still getting used to like the setup of it and everything. Um, I don't even know if I've done the lighting right to be fair. I don't know, I'm going to leave it on that. Um, also, this wasn't clipped on properly when I just recorded a minute ago, but, you know, I wanted to wear this shirt because it's my favourite shirt at the moment. Um, and also, there's a fly in here, so it's probably going to hit me in the face a couple of times. I tried to film a second ago, and I noticed it on the wall, and I went to swat it away, and I literally grazed it and it didn't fly away, so that's kind of weird. Anyway, um, <laughs> for this video um, I'm going to carry on talking about something that I touched on in a different video that people wanted me to talk about, um, which is the fact that it's, a, <laughs> it's kind of a running joke, but it is kind of true, <laughs> um, is the whole thing about you know dating guys in bands. Um, because most of my exes have been in bands, um, that's not a deliberate thing, that's just like a random thing, like I'll, you know, I met them and, um, got to know them, went on a few dates with them, whatever, or even got into a relationship with them and then a little while later they're like, oh yeah, so I'm in this band and I was like, oh no, another band boy, but anyway, um, yeah, so not all of my exes, but most of them, I think bar two although one technically uh was a dj a dj um but he was mainly like a graphic designer so um we won't we won't count him in that but um yeah most of the others to be fair were were in bands so yeah it was something that i touched on in a previous video um, I think I uploaded that video. I'm not very good at this. Like, I keep recording stuff and I'm like, yeah, that's a really good idea. And then I'll edit it. And then I just kind of don't want to upload it. So I don't. I'm pretty sure I touched on it in a previous video. But yeah. Um, people keep asking me about it anyway. Because it's come up before in, like, questions and stuff. But, um, yeah. Uh, it's not quite as glamorous as it might seem. <laughs> Um, so that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to do a video because I've seen a lot of people um, sort of commenting on stuff for different bands and obviously they're like young people, not necessarily young girls but just young people who seem to have um, kind of romanticised <laughs> what it would be like to date someone in a band or like, I don't know, they just kind of live in this weird little fantasy land and it's not at all what you probably think. <laughs> so I thought I'd just touch on that a little bit more today. Um, yeah, so from my experience, it's... I have to say it's not necessarily for everyone. Um, it takes a very sp specific type of person to be able to date someone in a band anyway. Because obviously they're away a lot, but also the fact that if you're insecure in any way, it can be very difficult. So you have to be in kind of a strong mindset and in a good relationship too, I think, for it to work. Um, I've got a couple of like stories that I can share and I have checked. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just as like examples um, as to why it's not for everyone. Like I say, it's not all glitz and glamour. Um, if you go with them on like tour or whatever it's not what you think either um especially if they're just starting out i've kind of been at both ends of the scale and um, when they're first starting out it's not fun <laughs> um well it, it depends like i said it depends on what type of person that you are i personally found it fun because i love that type of stuff i love being in tight spaces with people and just you know the the fun of it you know everyone kind of winds each other up on purpose or you know if they wind each other up by accident it can be a bit of an issue because then real fights break out but usually it's just people pranking each other moaning at each other um being in tight spaces together because you can't go anywhere 
endless driving to random places. Nine times out of ten, you get there and they're like, yeah, we don't need you. Or it's cancelled, sorry. Which is really annoying. Um, as previously stated, I have been um, sort of a... Kind of a... Because I was going along to this stuff, some of it, um, not all of it, I didn't always go on tour and stuff, but for some of it, if I did, um, I would, you know, try and make myself useful, so I would be like merch girl, or I would um, take photographs, or I would, you know, film the set so that they could use it for stuff, like promotion and uh, DVDs and stuff. Um, and, not, and when you're not there as well, it's really fun to, like, help them out with other stuff, but... Yeah, being on tour isn't always great at start because obviously they just have this tiny little van. Um, it's a bunch of people, obviously, um, in my experience, um, the bands were pure, like, just a bunch of lads, um, including, you know, my partner at the time. Um, and, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like I say, it's long drives and stuff like that, which isn't too bad. You don't really get to see anywhere, which is a bit annoying. I mean, obviously, the if... I mean, girlfriends aren't always allowed to go. Depends on, you know, where they are, um, what kind of management they're with, like, how much it costs, what kind of van they've got, that kind of thing. But um, there are a few times... I say a few. <laughs> Most of the time when I have day guys in bands, it sounds really bad, but um, they have like, you know, I've, I've been along to quite a few shows, which has been really cool to be fair. Um, I didn't necessarily plan on it, but I kind of just got invited along. So I just, like I said, I made myself useful. But some people are not quite as okay with that situation. Um, some examples are... Um, my last boyfriend that I was with, um, his band, um, he ended up getting a new drummer and that drummer's girlfriend was very pretty and liked to pretend that she had a lot of money, you know, that kind of thing. She wasn't the smartest girl, <laughs> but she liked to look good and sound good, basically. So, yeah, she ended up not being allowed to go on tour, which she was not happy about. But at the same time, she wasn't happy when she was there. The few times that I was sat with her when we did go places, she was moaning the entire time that we were in a tight, small van um, that, to be fair, didn't smell too great because, you know, the lad sat to sleep in it. It didn't smell great, you know? Um... And, yeah, she didn't like that. She didn't like the long drives. She didn't like um, just standing around when we got there. She didn't like helping out either. She hated that. Um, and she also didn't like the fact that there was any females there. Like, if there was any females there, which obviously there would be, uh, it, it caused an argument. <laughs> and, quite frankly, those two used to argue a lot. Like, even when she wasn't there, um, he'd be a band practice obviously my partner would be at band practice and you know he'd ring me and he'd just be talking to me and he'd be like yeah they're having an argument so we can't really do anything and I could hear them in the background and I'm like whoa and at one point he lived with this guy as well so obviously being the girlfriends she pretty much moved in and I was already living in the house uh, so yeah that was a bit much because I didn't really get on with her because of her attitude towards things Obviously, I was civil with her because she lived in the house, even though none of us wanted her there. I don't even think the, the drummer that she was seeing wanted her there, but she was there. Um, yeah, and I just remember her kicking off. Um, I remember once I didn't go to a show um, um, because it was a local-ish show. Um, within like an hour or so drive so we just I just waited at the house and um, obviously this girl I don't I won't give her a name because that's just silly but this girl was there um, waiting we were waiting for the boys to come home I was kind of sat in my partner's room trying to stay out of the way because like I say I didn't really like her very much she was very 
I don't know the word f to be, well, I don't know a polite word to use for it, but she was very, um, I really can't think of a nice word to put it. <laughs> she made things feel claustrophobic, we'll put it that way. Um, so yeah, I was at the house waiting for him to come back, hiding in his room, you know, well, our room, technically, because I was pretty much living there at that point. And he rang me up and they were on the drive back. And I think their bassist was driving. Um, he must have been because my partner was, he was a singer and, a, and the guitar player. And the other guy was the bassist and uh, the drummer, I'm trying not to say anyone's names, the drummer couldn't drive because um, he just couldn't. And my partner just obviously wasn't driving because he was ringing me. So it must have been the other guy, uh, the bassist. Anyway, so he, my partner rang me and he was like, look, we've got a serious situation with this girl. And I was like, yeah, I can hear her screaming in the other room. He was like, yeah. So basically, obviously we're an hour late coming back which happens, you know, they have to like dismantle everything, they have to get everything back into the van, they have to wait around for like whoever to, if they are getting paid, to pay them, probably argue with them because they probably didn't want to pay them nine times out of ten, that used to happen a lot, or they try and pay them in beer or something stupid. Um, so yeah, sometimes they didn't come home straight away, obviously. And she was really kicking off this time because it was gone midnight, and she didn't understand why they weren't back. And he was like, yeah, I, I really don't get it um, to just be warned. And I was like, right, okay. So I was like, I'm staying in this room. No, she came and knocked on the door. <laughs> I was like, no. And um, yeah, she was like, can you believe that they're not back yet? And I was like, well, yeah, that kind of happens. Like it takes them a while to dismantle stuff. Like I've been there for quite a few shows. Like I know how it kind of works. It's not a big deal. But no, she didn't understand and she was like, don't you ever worry. They're like, they're like, <laughs> they're like getting with girls in the van. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I'm like, A, it's a tiny van. B, it stinks. So that's not going to happen. But also like, why would they do that? Like, they're tired. They've just driven a long way. They've got girlfriends. Why would they do that? You need to like... They're not just stood outside the van waiting for, like, one of them to be in the back seat with a girl. Do you know what I mean? They're like, no, we just want to fucking get home, like, hurry up. That's not happening. And they were literally driving. And I could tell that they were driving anyway, but she just did not buy it. Anyway, so she used to get really jealous and funny all the time about stupid stuff like that. And it used to really do my head in. But apparently most girls do. Most of his ex-girlfriends were pretty much the same way. Um, I don't know... Like, and that was just, like, her partner was just the, I know it sounds bad, but, like, just the drummer, he used to say. And she would be like, don't you worry, because, like, obviously your boyfriend's, like, the lead singer and all this stuff. And I was like, no, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> In fact, like I said last time, you, when you are, like, with them on these tours, like, they have to kind of, well, they don't have to, but it, it just works out better if they're, like, single, you know? because then you can kind of get the girls, like the young girls, to buy CDs and stuff. Like they're their target um, like audience for most bands, to be fair. Like young girls, if they like someone, they're more likely to take a demo or buy a demo or buy a shirt, you know? It's just how it goes. So the amount of times when I was a merch girl and girls would come up to me and be like, oh, the singer's really fit, like, what's he like? And I was like, yeah, he's really fit, yeah, he's great. <laughs> totally single not my boyfriend at all just to get them to buy stuff do you know what I mean <laughs> it used to happen a lot but she was like don't you ever worry about like that kind of thing happening and I was like no and you can't like you can't do that like obviously that does go on I'm not saying it doesn't go on um but if the person that you're with is a decent person then you know they're not going to do that but I mean that goes on in normal relationships not just guys in bands like if that person is that type of person, it doesn't matter what job they do, they're going to do that. But yeah, it just really surprised me. Like, she got with him thinking it was going to be, like, this real glitz and glamour thing, and it wasn't, and then she just didn't want anything to do with it. But at the same time, she wanted to know where he was at all times and what he was doing, and it just got really annoying really fast. So at one point, we had to lie and say that I was staying somewhere else when I was actually with the boys. <laughs> 
um, because they said no, no girlfriends allowed. But obviously, I was there. And um, she found out once and she really kicked off because she was like, why am I not allowed? And she is, and she's really kicking off. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not always as glamorous as it seems. And obviously some of my other partners as well um, that I've been with that have been in bands, you know, where they've been a bit bigger and stuff, not just starting out. Um, you do get a lot of like weird stuff happen because you know if they don't really because the bands don't necessarily interact at that point like they just don't so you do get random dudes from other bands coming up to you and being like oh you're the merch girl and you're like yeah and they'll be a bit lechy <laughs> like they just basically leer over you and they're like, oh, we should have a merch girl. You should come work for us. But, like, they have other intentions. Do you know what I mean? And I've had that happen a couple of times as well, um, which was a bit weird. Um, one of the guys that I was seeing, his band um, got relatively big and they went on tour with a band from the US, which I will not name, uh, because his other band is huge. And the singer was really lovely, like... He's the main guy that everyone knows, like, anyway, because of this other band. But their bassist was a complete lech, and he just didn't get it. Like, he didn't know that I was with my partner, and he said his name then. Um, and he just used to, while they were playing, he would just be stood next to me, chatting me up, basically. And I'm like, no. And he didn't really understand it, because apparently over there in... Uh, California and all those kind of places apparently it was just the done thing like the, the merch girls get passed around like hotcakes and it's like well not in this instance thank you very much <laughs> and yeah you do get a bit of that which is a bit annoying um but thankfully my partner at the time just kind of even though obviously he was in a bit of a difficult situation because he couldn't exactly have a go at this guy because they needed this tour because his this guy's band was like quite big um he just kind of laughed it off but in a you know no she's mine kind of attitude and it did work but you know it does happen you know and you get called like you get confused with groupies and stuff like that which you know some bands do dabble in but other bands don't and that's fair enough i don't think groupies is really as big a thing for uk bands as it is for us i've noticed that which is weird, but anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, and you know, they, it's just, it's just the kind of person that you are, if, you, if you're not interested in, you know, standing around and making yourself useful and doing like a bit of work or, you know, sitting in a van for hours with a bunch of smelly boys, <laughs> does it really appeal to you? then yeah it's not that's basically what it is especially at first like it does get better but like at first that's, that is what it is you know and they are broke um another thing about dating boys in bands that you will definitely notice having lived with one as well because <laughs> we were in a relationship for five years we moved in together uh we moved a couple of times and the amount of times that we've moved in places and then within a week like at least one room or another will become a studio <laughs> like it just will just just know that that will happen uh, at one point we were in this tiny little room um it was actually my room at my mum's and I came home one day and it was it was such a tiny room that it had a double bed in it obviously because we were both staying there um it had a little walkway down the side before you hit the wall so that was it and then at the bottom there was like probably about that much space before like the window and he managed to get in a desk <laughs> his amp <laughs> his um pc with like all of his music software and everything else and then like a mic set up everything it was just basically like this really really tiny studio and then yeah there's been a couple of times where, you know, we moved into a place and we had a spare room and I was like, cool, that can be my art room. And he was like, yeah, it can be your art room. Became a studio. <laughs> to be fair, I did just kind of encourage it because um, 
at one point, uh, my partner at the time, he got really depressed because uh, the band kept splitting up. Uh, he lost like a really good drummer and then got kind of an F1. It was the band that I was just talking about actually. Um, that his head wasn't in the game because it was so far up his girlfriend's ass, it was unreal. Uh, so yeah, he got a little bit depressed and he nearly quit music altogether. And I was like, no, you need to carry on, like even if it's just by yourself. And you know, I, I just wanted to encourage that. I did borrow the room sometimes, especially at Halloween, to like make stuff. But ultimately, I gave in and I let him have his studio. <laughs> so that also happens a lot. So you need to be prepared for that as well. But yeah, like I say, it does take a specific type of person, I think, to be able to put up with it and just deal with it and, you know. Obviously, there's, like, good things as well. Like, you do get to travel a lot and have a lot of fun. Well, it depends what your class is fun, I guess. I, you know, like I say, I like travelling around in tight spaces with people. Me and him, literally, um, the guy that I was with for five years lived in that tiny room and then we were going to get a narrow boat well we did get a narrow boat so you can imagine how tightly spaced we would have been anyway and most of that boat was probably going to be a studio as well but you know <laughs> that's how it goes um but yeah it all depends on the type of person that you are but i think people don't quite realize what actually goes into it because obviously they are away a lot um so it does take a lot of trust but most relationships do you know, I get that it can be harder because they are like sought after in a way by people that don't, but you have to realise that the people that are like chasing after them or whatever it is just, you know, uh, just to be, be able to say like, oh, I got with that person in this band. It's not necessarily like, you know, they actually want to steal them away from you or anything. And if you've got a good one, then obviously they'll realise that and not about um but yeah i just i just i don't know people get asking me about it and i wanted to point out those things because i feel like not many people are actually aware of what it's like to date someone in a band um i'm by no means like an expert i'm not saying i like, exclusively date people in bands it just so happens that like you know quite a few of my exes if i like I'm, i don't know i'm drawn to creative people <laughs> and in the area that i uh, my hometown and stuff like that that I've lived and have lived in have weirdly always had like quite creative people but they're creative in the sense that nine times out of ten the guys do music and like girls will do other creative things so it was just like a weird thing because at one point um, when I was like dating around um, I say dating around I've had like five serious relationships but you know what I mean um, there was just a lot of bands where I was from and everyone was in bands it was just a thing like my hometown was just a very musical place and it was really cool and I miss it to be fair because it's not like that anymore everyone was just always at shows no matter whether they were into that type of music or not they were just there you know and I miss that it was cool it was really cool and I miss being excited about stuff like you know being like them being played on the radio and stuff like that. It's always fun when you're there for that first occasion of stuff like that, you know? Their first shirts, their first CD, their first, like, video, their first... I don't know, it's just really cool to be around for all of that and get excited about it. And like I say, a couple of times I have been able to, like, design stuff for them. Like, my ex that I was with for five years, I managed to design T-shirts. I did their album actually their covers for their album for free i didn't charge them anything for it i don't even think i got a copy of the cd i think i got one and it went to my mum because she loved that band um and i got a shirt that i designed um and i did a few of their promotional photos as well i took the photos for the cd um and I did a couple of other shirt designs, but the songs that he'd recorded for that, I don't think they ever released them, so I didn't get to do them. But they were really good designs. I remember those. I should dig them out and use them for something else. Because he's not using them. Yeah, I should do that. Um, but yeah, I miss those days. They were good days. You know, at the moment, obviously, I'm not going out as much and stuff like that. Um, 
so it's not quite the same. Obviously, the world is at a standstill at the moment. But I definitely miss shows anyway, because I was just one to just go to shows anyway, regardless. Um, whether it was to support my partner or just go to a show, like his friend's show or whatever. Um, that's another good thing, though. Sometimes if they're like local bands and stuff, you get free shows, which is really nice. I miss that too. I've been to quite a few free shows in my time. <laughs> just turn up and they're like, oh yeah, we know him, it's fine. And we're like, thanks. And we just go in or help him set up and then we get to stay for free. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of people just see the stuff like that's put out there like for bigger bands and they're like, oh yeah, it's just such a great life. And it's like, no, most bands have to like go through a lot of crap to get to that point if they ever get to that point, you know? Some of uh, the bands that I've been friends with or, you know, guys that I've dated in bands, um, some of them have been really good. They have been really good. And they didn't really get very far. Or they did, and then they just kind of dropped it. And I don't really know why. My ex especially. I don't think he does music anymore, which is a shame, because he was really good at it. I don't know why he stopped, but he has. Um, <laughs> but yeah, good stories. I have quite a few good stories from that, to be fair. They're not all bad. I'm just pointing out that like it's not all glitz and glamour. That's that's the point of this video. I'm not saying it's all bad. I'm just saying like that's the actual like truth of it. <laughs> so yeah, that's all I'm going to go into for this video. I won't share all the other stories. Um, I didn't make up names for people because, to be fair, I probably would slip up and say their actual names, so it's just easier to just say who they are in the band. <laughs> um, and I don't want people to guess who they are either. You know? I don't want to say something or like a name that even sounds similar and then people be like, oh, I think I know who that is. I don't, I don't want that. Because, <laughs> um, they're, they're, you know, They've all got their issues and stuff, some of the old bandmates and stuff, but like, I don't want them to feel crappy about it. You know, I'm past all that now, it's years later, it's fine. But, yeah. That's all I'm gonna say for this video. <laughs> I'm not going to spill any more gossip other than that. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, I might try and like, find some other bits and pieces from, uh, you know, traveling around with bands and stuff and doing all that stuff, because it was fun. Um, obviously I can't share like video footage and stuff like that that I've got, I don't think. If I can figure out a way to, where you can't, s no, because then you won't have to hear the audio or see their faces, otherwise you know who they are. I don't know. I'll figure something out, but if I can find some stuff or like some stories to tell, then I might do another one of these. Who knows? But anyway, I'm gonna go. Um, if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up. Um, and I will, and obviously everything else in the description, blah 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 blah, all that stuff that they make me say that I'm not gonna say. I typed it out below. It's fine. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.